The following are all good prognosis after nerve injury except A. Young age B. Low velo velocity injury C. Sharp or knife injury D. Proximal injury E. Early exploration And the answer is D. Proximal injury Now let's revise a bit regarding the prognosis after the nerve injury Among the main factors associated with outcomes after repair of peripheral nerve injuries are 1. Age of the patient 2. Mechanism of injury 3. Nerve injured 4. Injury location 5. The defect length 6. The repair time 7. The repair method 8. Operation technique 9. Repair materials Now let's discuss about the main factors Number 1. The age Younger patient has a better outcomes than older patient In children they have stronger regenerative capacity, require a shorter length of nerve regeneration due to relatively short limbs, have a shortened duration of re because of excellent growth, and they have less atrophy. Nerve regeneration was poorest in patients age more than 50 years old due to relatively poor nutritional status, local circulation, fewer receptors because of age-related changes of the central nervous system, CNS. Number 2. Mechanism of Injury High energy blunt trauma associated with serious bone and soft tissue injuries. Outcomes may be poor after the repair of the nerve injuries if the tissue bed in poor condition. In extensive crush injury, there is significant area of damaged tissue resulting in poor local profusion after the debridement of the dead tissue. Study by Murovic shows good to excellent results after knife injuries, poor in gunshot or sharpnel injuries. Number 4. Injury location or injury site. When the injury is close to the proximal end of the nerve, functional recovery after nerve repair is poor. If the injury is close to the distal end, functional recovery after nerve repair is good. The reason being A. If the location of the injury is too close to the neurons, massive neuronal necrosis may occur which may seriously affect the functional recovery. B. Functional recovery depends on regeneration of nerve fibers from the location of the injury to the nerve endings. The more proximal injuries, the longer the time it took to regenerate. Muscle regeneration occurs after an extended period of denervation, resulting in increased difficulty in restoring function after re -innervation. Degenerative changes in the skin receptors 
result in even poorer post-operative functional recovery. C. The proximal segment of the nerve tract is often composed of mixed nerve bundles and the risk of crossover growth between the sensory and motor nerve fibers is high. At the distal end, the nerve has already divided into sensory and motor tracts. And perineural suturing can be performed between the ends of the motor and sensory tract to achieve a satisfactory functional recovery. Number 6. The Repair Time Outcomes after nerve repair depends on the time from the injury to the repair. Earlier repair is associated with better outcomes. If one stage repair of the injured nerve is possible, new nerve fibers can quickly grow into the distal end of the nerve. If the nerve is not repaired for a long time after the injury, scarring may occur in the distal end of the nerve or the ingrowth of new nerve fibers may be obstructed by collapse of the endoneural sheath. Even if there is new nerve fiber ingrowth, the original morphology and function cannot be restored. Moreover, long-term loss of innovation results in degeneration and atrophy of the muscle fibers and the terminal receptors in the skin. Outcomes are poor when the repair is delayed by more than one year because muscle atrophy becomes irreversible at 1.5 to 2 years after loss of innovation. Okay, that's all. Thank you. A 5-year-old child fell from a swing and sustained a fracture of lateral condyle of the humerus. When he is 21 years old, he is likely to have a. Stiffness of elbow B. Myositis ossificans C. Ulna neuritis D. Cubitus varus deformity E. Complete claw hand And the answer is D. Cubitus varus deformity now let's find out the reason for this answer. Possible complication following pediatric lateral condyle fracture is lateral condyla overgrowth, cubital varus or valgus, fishtail deformity, osteonecrosis, neurological injuries, facial arrest and malunion. The most common complication following lateral condyle fracture is lateral condyla overgrowth or spur formation occurring up to 73% of cases. It is related to coronal malrotation of the distal fragment leading to displacement of the periosteum and new bone formation. Lateral condyla spur formation occurs more commonly following displaced fracture and has a marginally higher incidence following open reduction internal fixation or if then close reduction percutaneous spinning CRPP. Lateral condyle spurs are rarely symptomatic but can occasionally cause pain and or decrease range of movement ROM. 
the second most common complication following lateral condyle fracture is a cubitus varus deformity, occurring around 40% of cases. It can occur following both operative and non-operative treated fracture. The mechanism is postulated to be related to inadequate fracture reduction and or, or growth stimulation of the lateral condyla physis. A cubitus varus deformity is rarely symptomatic. Cubital valgus deformity is less common than cubitus varus deformity. Cubital valgus is a consequence of premature epiphysiodesis of the lateral condyla physis and is associated with non-union of lateral condyla fracture. Rarely, a tardy ulnar nerve palsy may occur as a sequelae of the cubital valgus deformity. Another complication is a formation of fishtail deformity that usually occurs as a result of osteonecrosis of the central portion of the distal humerus physis with continued growth of the lateral condyle. This deformity has two forms. A. As a sharp angle wish because of the persistence of a gap at the lateral physis leading to failure of proper formation of the lateral crystal. B. As a smooth curve because of osteonecrosis of the lateral part of the medial trochlear crystal. This deformity rarely compromises the function. Physical arrest is very rarely seen following a lateral condyle fracture and usually does not result in a significant limb length discrepancy because only 20% of humeral growth occur at the distal physis. The loss of terminal degree of extension and flexion are common following lateral condyle fracture but rarely cause functional impairment. The last complication of pediatric lateral condyle fracture is non-union. Non-union can present either as a result of delayed presentation, displacement of a conservatively managed fracture, early removal of fixation, or traditional non-union of an undisplayed fracture itself. Lateral condyle fracture tend to heal more slowly than other physical fracture, especially when they are treated non-operatively. Failure of fracture union by 8 weeks is regarded as delayed union, whereas non-union is defined as failure to failure of the fracture to heal by 12 weeks. Non-union tends to occur in undisplaced fracture or undiagnosed fracture initially treated non-operatively. Cause of the non-union is the reason of lack of bony opposition of the thin lateral condyle fragment as well as the pull of the forearm extensor muscles. The lack of support of the non-united lateral condyle column and continued growth of the medial condyle results in cubital, cubitus valgus deformity. Okay, thank you.